for some reason, reducing fractions is just a walking, talking nightmare in this class. We've done it forever. It's been second grade you were doing it, that's just not what they told you you were doing. In third grade you are doing it, fourth grade you are doing it, in fifth grade we're reviewing it and we're going to do it again. It is reducing fractions of pain. Yes, it absolutely is. Is reducing fractions worth it? Yes, because if you don't do your math with reduced fractions, your numbers get really big, really fast. And I don't know about you, but I would personally rather work with one half than uh, like 80, 160. Those numbers can get really big really fast when we're multiplying or dividing fractions. And our math can get to be a mess. It's easier to use small numbers when you're doing math, so we make our fractions as small as we can. So let's take a fraction like 4 twelfths. It looks awkward because we've got bigger numbers. It's going to be a little bit harder to do the math with because not everybody has their 12, their 12 multiplication memorized. So what we need to look for is the greatest common factor. Or in your notes, it'll probably be G, C, F. That means the biggest number that both of these can be divided by. So if I have my factors of 4, I always have 1 and 4. Two things I can multiply together, factors, that make 4. And I'm also going to have 2 because 2 times 2 equals 4. I don't have to write the 2 twice because we've already got 1. We're not interested in setting up the math problems. We're just listing factors. 12 is going to be a bigger number, so it's going to have more factors. So we always have 1 and 12 because math, and that's how multiplication works. We also have 2 and 6 because 2 times 6 equals 12. And we also have 3 and 4, because 3 times 4 equals 12. Now, in most math classes, they give factor sheets, which are just a big list of every number and all the factors that go into it. And some of them, they're paired up like this by multiplication. And some of them, they're listed in number order. It doesn't really matter, because the thing we're looking for is, what's the biggest number that I can divide 12 by, that I can also divide 4 by? And whenever we're using factor sheets in class, I always say go for the biggest number first. And then I know, can I divide 4 by 12? Well, I'm going to get another fraction. Too big. That's bigger than 4. I can divide every number by 1. So really the numbers I'm looking at using to do, that I can divide 4 by and I can divide 12 by are 2 and 4. So can I reduce by 2? Sure I can. I can divide by 2 over 2, and I'll get 2 sixths. Am I going to have to reduce again? Yeah, because this isn't all the way reduced. I can divide 2 by 2 and I can divide 6 by 2. When I say GCF, the reason it's worth it to break out those factor sheets is you're not doing 100 small division problems. You're just going to do one pretty small division problem. Because I also notice I can divide 12 by 4. And because math, I can divide 4 by 4. If I have four students and four pizzas, each student gets one pizza. If I have 12 pizzas and four students, then each student is going to get three pizzas. In its reduced form, this four twelfths is the much less awkward looking one third. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to have to do any kind of math, I'd much rather do it with a 3 than a 12. Just for the simple fact that it's way, way easier. It doesn't matter how big or small your numbers get. If we have 12 48s, we're still going to look for the GCF by looking at 48 and saying, okay, what's the biggest number I can divide by that I can still divide my 12 by? Is it work? Yes. Is it always wrong in every math class across the world if it's not reduced? Yes.